in any virtual learning environment via learning management system synchronous and asynchronous communication happens basically interactivity is an integral part of any learning process without interactions learning cannot take place so how will we make these learnings possible maybe through synchronous communication and asynchronous communication let us see in this module what is synchronous communication what is asynchronous communication what is difference between these two modes of communication and what are various tools which will make this possible objectives of this sessions are differentiate between synchronous and asynchronous communication identify tools for synchronous and asynchronous communication what is synchronous communication let us see in synchronous communication communication takes place in real time synchronous communication ensures interactions of learners with instructors with peers with various resources and with community how is it possible this kind of interaction at real time at the same time is possible through various tools as you are aware in online learning learners are not in the campus and still they need to communicate so what are the possibilities what are various tools via which learners and other learners learners and teachers can come online at the same time and talk to each other is only talking possible or is any other exchange of media possible you have heard about voip voice over internet protocol now there is facility that we make calls through internet and that's why there are no overseas phone call charges say through google talk skype calling or whatsapp calling skype is not considered as voice over protocol because it has other media also but skype provides this facility to make phone calls google talk and whatsapp calls are very popular voip is today apart from voip we can have chat many a times most of you might be engaged in text based chat so this chat is also considered a synchronous tool of communication because the person who is chatting with you needs to be online at the same time audio conferencing and video conferencing are other two modes of synchronous communication or types of synchronous communication in audio conferencing there are audio discussions online and in video conferencing there are video discussions online virtual classroom is the very professional and systematic mode or type of synchronous communication in virtual classroom teachers students everybody comes in a classroom which is virtual let us see this various types of synchronous communication we have already discussed about voip what happens in chat aspects of chat can be listed chats are instant at the same time instantly you communicate with each other you go on typing or sometimes you may be talking also there can be questions and feedbacks via chat now we are not talking about informal chats we are talking about learning chats and that's why students can ask questions to teachers and teachers can give answers responses or teachers can give feedback on various assignments to students for example in learning management system if one assignment is announced students upload assignments teachers download and check those assignments after that teacher plans for online chat just to give feedback this feedback can be given one to one or in a group by identifying common errors of assignments or points for improvements in those assignments so the chat is real time and the chat is basically a kind of text conferencing so you all communicate via text in chat 
in audio conferencing when people call each other there are necessarily more than two persons involved they all discuss they all can hear each other and they all can have a formal discussion so if teacher is planning audio conferencing a few students say at a time five six students and teacher can come online get connected through audio conferencing and discuss over a learning point if along with audio conferencing visual are added if persons can see each other then that can be considered as video conferencing in video conferencing there is necessarily a camera involved so whoever has camera installed along with their system they can be seen so similarly four five persons can come online they can see each other in separate windows and they can talk to each other generally all corporate meetings major academic meetings administrative meetings can happen through video conferencing there can be two sets of institutes persons where the both the rooms are connected via camera and a team of persons can see the other team of persons and there can be video conferencing do you realize that in video conferencing visuals are transmitted and that's why speed of internet matters a lot as soon as you experience that internet is slow bandwidth is low you can shift from video conferencing to audio conferencing you can mute your video even quality of camera matters if quality of camera or bandwidth is low you cannot see each other properly or visuals are blur even speed and memory of your processor matters because the data is visuals video synchronous video and sending this data to the next point is possible only if speed and memory of your processor is good in virtual classroom there is not just seeing each other but also there may be some teacher slides there may be a board to write something there may be possibility of taking questions responding as per your own choice we need to learn virtual classroom separately as a module so we will not discuss much here from synchronous communication let us go to asynchronous communication what is asynchronous communication in synchronous communication we have seen that there is real time communication teachers and learners log in at the same time and talk to each other but it is not possible always and it is not expected because we are talking about online learning where flexibility of time and place is given if flexibility of time is an important issue then there should not be compulsion that everybody logs in at the same time for all kinds of interactions so whenever we can talk to each other write to each other access material as per our own convenience we say that we are involved in asynchronous communication one asynchronous tool you always use whether you are involved in online learning or not that is emails how do you access emails as you at your own convenience flexibility of time and place is there sometimes you are traveling you have some time and you access your emails through mobile responding to others emails is also as per our choice of time and choice of place so there is no compulsion that as soon as you receive email you receive responses at the same time you can respond to your emails any time at any place this is asynchronous communication so let us see what kind of asynchronous communication we are talking about through asynchronous communication we collaborate with other peers we access learning material asynchronously we interact with experts and we have time and place flexibility involved now let us see some tools of asynchronous communication 
We have already discussed about email because that was very obvious and popular example of asynchronous communication. Some of you might be reading others blogs or you may be have, uh, having your own blog. So blog is asynchronous communication tool. You might have heard about wikis. Wikis are another examples of asynchronous communication which is used quite often in online learning. What are blogs? In blogs, people can write or post videos, images online in one environment which is chronological. Blogs have posts. You write something today that is your today's post. You upload image along with that or you may give link of video. Again after some time or after a few days again you post on blog. Your previous post chronologically goes down and new text, new images, videos appear on the, your blog. Blog is considered as your own online but open diary. You can write anything, any experiences on your blogs or blogs can be used as learning tools also. Teachers can allow learners to post their experiences, their knowledge on blogs. There can be interactions on the blog. Necessarily we read somebody's blogs and we comment on that. We share something related to the same point and that is how blogs of one subject can get developed. Either you can tell all students to create their own blogs linked to each other or teacher can create one blog and all students can go on posting on the same blog. So to summarize, blogs have text, graphics and video clips. Blogs have many weblogs involved. Blogs are in chronological order and many periodic sporadic entries are often done in blogs. We have discussed about emails. Emails are for private communication. Only the person whom we are sending emails can read our content. It's not open as blogs are open. Using email is pretty simple. You can also broadcast messages by sending email at the same time to several persons. And emails are reliable modes of communication. Many a times 99.9% .9 emails are received by the receivers and responded. Wikis are another asynchronous communication tools. Wikis are communally managed documents. What is that? We can create a wiki. It's kind of say online book but not written by one person, written by many. Wikis can have sections. We all can come together, write on those wikis. Content gets generated by a group of persons. We can read and edit our own content and in wiki we can also comment on somebody other's content. So wiki is a fantastic tool where students can come together, interact, create some documents together. Wikis may also have inbuilt discussion forums. For example, a teacher can create or upload a document and in light of this document, learners can go on discussing. Or a learner can upload a section content on which other learners can comment and discuss with each other. Even teachers can post their comments and remarks in the same wiki. We have so far discussed what is synchronous communication, what is asynchronous communication and what are various tools of synchronous and asynchronous communication. Let us now try to compare these two modes of communication because if you are planning online learning, you will need to take decisions when to use asynchronous communication and when to use synchronous communication. Let us start from when. When do we use asynchronous communication? And when do we use synchronous communication? Asynchronous communication gives us enough time to think. So 
if the tasks are complex that requires learners time to understand the task understand content think about it reflect and then write something then we prefer asynchronous tools of communication for example if we give them some topic tell them to think on the topic and write then we will give them asynchronous mode of communication always this does not help because many a times we want instant responses from learners so if the task is not very complex and if we want learners responses those come spontaneously there and there if we wish to maintain motivation level of learners then we prefer synchronous modes of communication so this is a major difference when we use asynchronous and when we use synchronous communication sometimes we use synchronous communication for planning some processes for planning task for example if we are deciding on a project we colleagues also many a times write to each other keep on writing exchange emails and then we say okay so to finalize the task to finalize the processes let us meet once and discuss face to face this face to face discussion can be replaced by synchronous communication where planning can be done by synchronous discussions even synchronous communication can be used to get acquainted to each other either we can introduce ourselves in asynchronous discussion forum but that becomes a bit formal and learners may not be very open to write their introduction on the contrary when we meet say on weekend chat they all start introducing each other and that becomes very informal so asynchronous communication may be used for very very formal kind of writing whereas synchronous communication can be used for informal task informal introductions for getting acquainted to each other and for planning certain things synchronously so why do we use synchronous communication and why do we use asynchronous communication asynchronous communication is used when we require reflections of learners when we wish to give them some more time to reflect synchronous communication can be used when we require immediate responses spontaneous responses this synchronous communication maintains motivation and commitment who knows whether participants will appear online will respond properly in asynchronous whereas in synchronous we can catch them online we have already seen that synchronous and asynchronous tools are different we can use emails we can use discussion forums we can use blogs for asynchronous communication and we can use online chats video conferencing audio conferencing virtual classrooms for synchronous communications we have seen that reflections can be written comments can be written on asynchronous tool for example blog we can upload some topic and tell learners to write their reflections and create or maintain a blog we have also seen that for introducing getting acquainted to each other we can use synchronous tools planning can be done on synchronous tools if we have a topic on which others thoughts views are important and not spontaneous views but thoughtful comments maybe some criticism maybe some discussion where some very important inputs are expected then we use asynchronous communication so that people can learners can experts can read think write their views and the topic may go on on the contrary for online lectures video conferences experts lectures sessions we can use synchronous communication when all learners can log in at the same time and expert can deliver the session so these are differences between asynchronous and synchronous communication tool we use many cooperative learning methods also we need to understand what are features and strengths of a particular methodology and then judiciously referring to features of asynchronous and synchronous communication we need to decide which mode of communication we will use for a particular learning experience